your eyes tell the stories of the day you wish you culture and me it is a place where the truth should be carried the arts and music scene really shows what people are about. Share what's going on here in York. It makes you feel like a family. Local art has a face that most people can relate to. Our community up here that sticks together. Art is art. Great potential with great artists, poets, singers, writers, directors, filmmakers. It's fantastic. Everyone has a story to tell. That moment, you have to capture that moment and share it with the rest of the world. Showing something that maybe is not been seen before. Without art, what good is life? I am art. I've been art ever since I was born. It really adds a great deal to our community. We don't really need art to exist, but you need art to live. Culture in Maine is important, and I think playing out is important, and playing open mics and playing wherever you can play. It's all about us all checking in with each other. This close to say dear one peace you wanna kill me in the act of what could maybe save us from sleep and what we are good I sniper here I'll shoot you run you scribbled on the walls of the lots of friends you didn't have. I call you and the time is right. Are you in? Are you out? But them all to know the end of us. Bye bye, beautiful. Don't by your words and they're calling all cause a face that slept down a face that slept down the words you scribbled on the walls the lots of friends you didn't have I call you when the time is right are you in are you out for them all to know Bye bye beautiful Don't bother the right Just to buy your words And they call in all cause A face that slept down Face that slept down. Bye bye, beautiful. Don't bother the right. Just to buy your words, and they call in all costs. A face that slept down. A face that slept down Now, you might not have caught it because it's a real trivia question, but last season when we had our guitar hanging on the wall that had some of the names of the best stars of the open mic and the indie music scene that had signed the guitar, one of those names was John Daly, but it took us all this time to be able to get him into the studio and come share some of the musical magic with us. So I know you're as grateful as I am that we managed to track down oh. the elusive oh. ghost of the underground music scene, <laughs> John Daly. Where have you been hiding, man? Where have I been hiding? Uh, I haven't really been hiding all that much. I have been, it, one of the reasons I agreed sort of to, to, to do this sort of thing uh, was that I wanted to speak out to the benefits of 
uh, music with mental health stability and stuff like that. I myself suffer from anxiety issues, uh, depression issues, and to be honest, that keeps me from getting out and doing stuff and playing in front of people. And but in the same vein, when I force myself, when it's embraced, you know, like when you have the Shane Spiels or you know, like the people that that want you to be better, um, it's it was it was a very fostering, nurturing um, environment. And I just, I just think it's, it's as strictly as a psychological remedy, it's underappreciated. And um, so to answer your question in so many words, uh, I have been dealing with some of my own emotional, uh, psychological issues, uh, things like that. It's, part, it's just part of... Uh, the thing, but it, it, the the point of this is is to is to it, put the importance on the music. The music is one thing that has been a constant the entire way through. I mean, I know I'm no professional, like great or anything, but it gives me a, a release, a, a chance to to speak out when I when sometimes I feel muted, you know. So um, that's. Well, I think that's a very real conversation to have, and I'm, I'm actually glad that you're giving us the chance to have that, because at one point, I wanted to do a themed episode mm -hmm. on people that have different emotional or mental mm -hmm. difficulties and that use the art to express them, mm -hmm. to manage them. But then what I realized is that there is such a massive percentage oh, of yeah. artists and creatives that suffer from different disabilities that it would be almost impossible to pick just one episode to put them into so it just becomes part of the conversation but it, it really it really is a, it's an epidemic and it's not being treated or handled but you know they're so quick with the medications and the uh i don't know i think there's a lot more natural like things that you know, music is part of life. I mean, your heartbeat is a rhythm, you know? I mean, so True. why would adding music to your life, you know, make, no, that's my belief. Now, we've had a very special series of installments over the last few months that's been very near and dear to my heart. It's been called Art That Heals, which is people that interpret art in a very different way and that focus on using their creativity as a service and an outreach to help people get in touch with themselves, to just make the world a better place. And we have a very unusual take, even beyond our art therapists and our, our channelers of art energy, we have an urban shaman, which I just thought was the coolest title ever when I first heard it. But we also have a very creative artist that is joining us today in the studio, Liette Monik, who has- Unique. Would you pronounce it Liette Monique? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, you know, I never knew that after all this time. I, no, okay. I know. Yay. Sorry. We have an amazing artist joining us, Liette Monique, who has her own studio in Royal Square. So now you're actually part of the, the Hive Art Space family. Right. I'm in the loft at Hive. I like that, the loft. It yes, sounds I very like ethereal and, and industrial, edgy, cool. <laughs> so basically that means, now people can see you by appointment by or they appointment can come or in. events, uh, first Fridays or any other event that Royal Square may have or that I'm invited to be in. So now what made you pair up with an art gallery? Well, And the energy of, of Royal Square as, a, as an art district in general. Well, it fit in with my energy because I'm like really different and um, <laughs> no. <laughs> and um, just uh, being accepted unconditionally, however you are, is yeah. very rare. And yeah. I found that to be here in our art community. <laughs> Here's confirmation, sure. look at that, <laughs> yeah. in our art community. And so that's what drew me um, to that was the energy. So explain exactly what is it, how would you describe what it is that you do? What I do is I feel 
I feel energy and I know things. Um, I just know things. Um, I am able to communicate with the other side easily. Uh, channel. I do really um, some powerful healings. Um, but how that translates into the art community as to a creative way um, through to healing is that it awakens them one spark at a time to who they were meant to be. Um, hopefully in this lifetime is what my goal is. <laughs> right, right. Um, I want it now. Now, uh, and I do that through many different modalities. Um, I, I do that through channeled tarot readings. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, right? Tarot <laughs> reader, right? Channeler yet. Um, Those daggone late-night infomercials gave you a bad name. There we I go. There we go. But um, it doesn't bother me anymore because I know I come from the heart, you know, and I do mean well. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, what that does is it gives people insight into what's going on in their lives at the moment with the path that they're currently on um, and what is the possibilities out there for them if they stay on the current path. Sometimes people have to change um, their path or make different choices in order to get to that good place that um, they're looking to go, to the person they were meant to be. Um, and, and the tarot readings opens that up to them and brings that into light. Now it's their choice whether they decide to continue on the path or uh, uh, make a different choice and go somewhere way different, which will then make a different outcome, of course. Right. There's a, we have the gift of choice. Um, I also do spiritual counseling. All my phone counseling is free. I do spend hours sometimes oh on the phone in late, late evenings. <laughs> That's very artist of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, other than that, uh, the healings come into play because what influences the inner particle is the outer energy, okay? So if your outer energy is out of balance, then your physical body, your mind, your emotions, your heart, your creativity is out of balance. And so get the energy back into balance, the chakras, the main energy centers of your body. And there's many, many chakras, you know, those are just the mains. Um, get those back into balance, um, and, and you, you will see a different effect in your life. Now, I do this in, through many different things as well. Um, I do it through Reiki, um, which is very cool, very cool. I held a uh, Reiki share uh, once a month, the first Sunday of the month. That's cool. In the loft at Hive, <laughs> from one to three. Um, but then other than that, I bring it into a, I call it a shamanic healing because that's when I use crystals um, and I use aromatherapy and hypnotherapy comes into play.
lips, I take the risk when not alone. When not Clifton Santiago, sculptor here in New York. We're, we're currently in the uh, gallery space of the Rudy Collective at uh, 25 East Philadelphia Street, New York. And the show in here currently is my work. It's a retrospective show. Uh, I had the pleasure of contacting people who bought my work years ago who were willing to let it come in here participate in the show. It, it's kind of a thrill to bring something in that I haven't seen as far back as 30 years ago. Um, and uh, um, there's also my newest work. Um, some of it is just a few days old. And, uh, it ranges, so it's, it is a retrospective show. Um, I do have some of my older, older pieces here. Like uh, there's one, the very first piece of woodwork I ever did. That was interesting to have, and um, <coughs> and the piece, one of my pieces that just finished is, is something that is uh, um, not the biggest piece I've done, but it's certainly the most complicated piece I've ever done. Uh, it took me well over nine months to put that one together. I've worked in metal, stone, steel. Actually, I started in steel before the first. Uh, before the first uh, wood piece that I did, I, I was working pretty much in welding and steel pieces. Um, I got fascinated with the possibility of the grain of wood has a life of its own, which is just like enjoying the life. So I put that into the piece. Um, the work really explores the relationship between the man and machine. Um, and it kind of, from that realm, it kind of goes into the Mental issues. Uh, there's, there's, uh, that is a, a theme that kind of is behind a lot of the work. Uh, I'm not sure that it's evident. It's, it's, um, there's a certain playfulness in some of the pieces. The, uh, uh, some of them are based on, on uh, children that I've known and, and imagery that kind of is resolved dealing with the, the personality of a particular person. Um, the, the earlier works were form without as much development of the theme that I had in the later works. The, uh, uh, I, I guess as I, I developed over time, I think that's, that's one of the things that's nice about a show like this, is that you can see a, a transition from, from simply a fascination with wood and the very first piece I did to something that took on some human form and human form kind of morphed into a combination of human and machine um, and some of them have even gotten, like I say, the point of environmental some of them have gotten very much um, statements about what we're doing to the world when I started into to school in the, the fine art program, I was at Towson University, and there was a drawing instructor, and uh, she uh, pulled me aside halfway through a class and said, "You should really reconsider." Uh, you know, I, I admit right up front that I'm not an illustrator. In life. I, I, I've been working over years. I think I've gotten better, but I'm not a great illustrator. So she says to me, you should really reconsider art is maybe not your, your forte. 
And <clears throat> I just kind of went, okay, you know, I know I'm not a sculptor. I mean, I know I'm not a, a, an illustrator. Like, I had no, you know, for me, an illustration is simply something that gets me to the sculpture. And <clears throat> so anyway, um, after I had graduated and done several shows, and she was, she, she, she was uh, someone who had um, uh, retired and was curating shows and was around Baltimore. And I get a call from her saying, Cliff, I am, I am putting together a show and I'm worried that the sculpture within the show just doesn't come up to the quality that I want. Would you please put your pieces in it? And it was like that point where I go, okay, I should, wonder if I should say anything about the fact that years ago you told me that I should probably drop it. Drop it. Um, so that, that's a perfect example. It's like once somebody tends to know my work, then I get calls from people curating shows. Um, I guess I don't hunt them down. I do do them. It's just that I get a call saying, I'm putting in a show in your quality work. Would you, would you participate? Well, I know the first two things that, that pop to mind, whenever you talk about any sort of alternative spiritualities or religions or more traditional or earth-based religions, things like that, the first thing that you have is people that are like, well, that's devil worship. That's people that are messing with dark energies or that's people that are, are you know, trying to control things or play with things that they shouldn't be. So when you hear those perspectives, how do you, how do you address those? <laughs> <clears throat> well, um, I don't want to offend anybody at all, um, but... <laughs> Jesus, I love Jesus, he's part of my team. Um, Jesus worked with energy. Jesus used the powers of the directions, north, east, south, west, to do his miracles, to do his work. Now, I am not by any means saying anything close to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, all I'm saying is he used the stuff, and it's it's in parts of the Bible that was not made part of the Bible. So saying that you feel like what you do is, is similar to what other great healers, Absolutely. including Jesus, have done, and right. that there's, it's a, a very positive thing. You're not, so the people that are like, oh, well, you're just messing with dark stuff or stuff you shouldn't be messing with, that's just, it's just simply not the case. No, absolutely not. I come from a real big place of love. If you ever look at my business cards or brochures, my motto is love is key to life. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I did teach Sunday school for two years, United Church Christ. Well, you know, folks. so, you know, I, I truly am here to help people, not to bring, to bring light into people's lives, to awaken them, you know, just to there's more to life. There's brightness in your life. There's not just this dead end, this stuck point. So is this the kind of thing that anyone can learn how to do? Or do you need to be born with certain talents? Or are you more effective because you have certain abilities that you've had, you said, since you were a child? You know, how does, if someone is curious about this kind of thing, how do they become more involved? Or, or how do they learn how to do this? If they're curious about it, um, the main thing um, is for their parents to not shut them down so it gets blocked off, first of all. Oh. Okay, that's very important. Um, but if they're curious about it, um, they're more than welcome to call me and I'll talk to them and see what's going on. I can feel if they have gifts or not. Um, but uh, that being said, explore it. Um, now, it's not a game, so don't go exploring things that you do <laughs> not understand or you think, oh, it's no big deal, because you may open something that you cannot shut up without someone else's help. A gateway. You know, stuff is real. I was thrown across the room by something invisible, okay? It, it, I have it all kinds of stuff on videotape and everything else, so <laughs> wow. my... my um, 
Anyway, uh, this stuff is real. It's not a game is all I'm saying. If you're interested, go with somebody that's experienced. Let them work with you. Gifts, if you feel that you want to do a certain thing, say read tarot cards, you can do that. You don't have to have a gift to do that. Okay. You just, you know, may just not read be able the guidebook that it. comes with it. <laughs> Pretty much. You don't have to channel it. That's just something I do that's extra. Cool. Reiki. Um, anybody has Reiki energy. That can be awakened in anybody. All you need are attunements. Um, and, and to learn the basics of it. Because the way I feel is that with anything you do in life, you must learn the basics first. And then you can build on that. Right. And yeah. now Reiki is very popular. Like therapeutic touch, Reiki, and, and using that connection and that energy work is practiced in a lot of hospitals. A lot of the, the local hospitals here, in fact, have nurses that are trained in that. Lots of our downtown venues, places like Sherry Ann's, places like The Hive, have Reiki practitioners. And that was always something that really intrigued me was that anybody could go and get a certification in a relatively short period of time. And I was like, well, how do they, how do they learn something, you know, some, some ancient form of, of traditional medicine, you know, in an afternoon? Like, how does that work? I don't know how they do it in an afternoon because when you learn like Reiki one from me, mm -hmm. it takes um, 16 hours, two days of eight hours, pretty much. Okay, okay that's just Reiki one. Uh, Reiki two is pretty much the same thing, two days. Um, and Reiki 3 is uh, maybe a, a couple hours less than two days, but um, it's not just an afternoon. There's a okay. lot to know. <laughs> okay. Um, I was okay. trained by a very good Reiki master. Surrounding yourself with, it, whether it be music or anything, auditory things that are comforting. Mm. Like you don't want to put on the Jerry Springer show. When, when you're feeling anxious, <laughs> no. all that yelling and screaming back and forth, yeah. that's going to internally, you know, um, pets are a great way to cope. Mm. You know, um, I was never a cat uh, person until I moved in with my fiance and uh, I've fallen in love with both her cats. You know, they, they, they are very intuitive and very and, and they can sort of read stuff. So pets are another great thing. Um, Talking is important, but sometimes that's the hardest. Yeah. Between leaving the house and, and talking, and and I'm and, and when I, I don't mean to make these blanket statements saying that everyone that, that has an issue is like me, and has the same struggles or has the same problems I do. It's just I've always wanted someone to to you know say these things so. Let people know, even if people can't necessarily feel exactly the same mm -hmm. thing, to know that someone else is struggling, that someone else is continuing on the journey and still trying to find the answers and and right. be better, that can make a huge difference. Right. Just and letting it, people know they're not alone. And it's and it's it's sort of on 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 par with the transgender sort of things going on in the U.S. right now. Um, a lot of people are very accepting. A lot of people are very for it, but the people that are don't get it are, you know, there's a lot of hate and a lot of anger there, yeah. and that then that translates to to really any minority, you know. If so, hate what's different, but um, I think genuinely people are good, and I think people just get frustrated. I know. I can understand why someone would get frustrated. Yeah. You know, just just for no reason, all of a sudden you're just a mopey, sad mess. And it's like you were just happy a minute ago. And that's got to be frustrating for your significant other, or your family, or whatever. But um, let's see. So now, what about music? Music. How did you get involved? How did you discover? the importance of music in your life and, and what does it, it do for you now? What it does for me is it provides me with an escape outside my neurosis-filled mind, basically. Mm. It, it, I sort of put my head on autopilot, my hands on autopilot, and 
it's but I didn't discover that till I was in my late twenties. Music was important for me all growing up. My dad was a musician, not a serious one, but he had a guitar. He taught me a few chords and stuff, and uh, he uh, he got me started in, in playing. And then I'd take like violin or, or or choir in school, and then but I'd drop it immediately because it was it was an academic thing. Right, <laughs> you, know? gotcha. okay. you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, then I did buy a guitar eventually, and it's something that you can take internal energy that would normally be nervous and bouncing around all over the place, and you can put it somewhere, and it makes you feel better. within my pieces in the past. Uh, this one has parts of an old cardioid in it. It's called Crank, and you can crank it. I was working on a much bigger piece at the time, and this was, this was actually um, a little bit of leftover pieces from the bigger piece that I assembled and made the, the, the crank, which is kind of a tongue-in-cheek or a joke about. I would just tell them that's how I make the wood do what it does. You stick the cord in from one side, you turn the crank, and it just flows out the other side. Basically, my work looks like uh, a cubist rendition of it when I start, and then you carve it down to, to, to what you want. 
you can see within, and then the joiner, I mean, there's, there's parts that are joined, and, and if you look closely, you'll see those. Um, and uh, the, uh, um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, first thing you have to do is develop good woodworking skills. Uh, when you start assembling wood, it, it has to all be, the, the grain all has to line up together or it will pull itself apart over time. If the grains are doing this, this is expanding this way, this is expanding that way, and it'll just it'll pop apart. Um, so everything has to be lined up. Except for the one exception to that is basswood. And um, if you ever see historic uh, carousel horses, they're all carved out of basswood. And it took me several years before I realized Oh, now I understand why they do that. Because basswood isn't a, it's, it's a soft wood and it's easy to deal with carving, but it also, being a soft wood, is kind of a hard thing to finish. It, it takes more work to finish it. So I remember thinking, why did they do that? And over years you discover, oh, I know exactly why they did that. Basswood is probably the most stable wood when, you, when you're combining the kind of things. It's basically a, 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 one of those horses is built the same way one of my pieces is. It's like small pieces all laminated together to create a big thing that is in carved into the shape. So, um, and then all the woods have a character of their own. Um, my favorite wood to work with is sassafras, and that's explainable by it smells like sassafras when you're working with it. Um, this is sassafras on, on these pieces. Um, the uh, uh, mahogany is a nice wood, it's nice to work with, but it, it, it is a kind of a brittle wood, which I discovered working on this. Um, I've got uh, uh, walnut at the top of it as well. And walnut's another nice wood that, to, to work with, and my most recent piece has got a ton of walnut in it. It's a very, uh, you know, it, it's interesting because <clears throat> I normally sand my wood down to about a, a 320 grit surface for most of these and kind of a, a, a sort of a, I guess you'd call it a matte sort of finish. But, um, my, the, the, the big piece with all the walnut in it, I got a little carried away and went to 400 grit and it has a, a sheen to it that is higher than anything else I've done. It was kind of one of those things that just kind of happened as I was finishing the piece. I kind of feel like this this is um, kind of a representation of, of my experience here in New York with the older, um, older furniture, older buildings. The piece itself um, has uh, materials that, that uh, reflect um, the age of, the, of the, the, the old furniture piece um, and the, the choice of materials. The, the walnut is something that would have been uh, comparable to this piece of wood. And so for the choice of secondary woods, I went with uh, uh, a total poplar which would have been a secondary wood in a piece of furniture in this age, done here. And, uh, one of the ways they identify older pieces of furniture is by the secondary wood. Um, for instance, poplar was something done in this area, but if you go up to New England, it probably would have been like a white pine. So it, it varies from place to place on old furniture. It's been interesting to have this piece here uh, and watch people as they discover it because you don't necessarily see the reflected image until you come around and you see it from the side. There's usually this sudden recognition of the fact, yes, <laughs> people's eyes go, whoa, look at that. I started doing the open mics at, with Shane Spiel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, a great guy and a long time a, culture and main friend. Very good guy. He, uh, I'd never played, performed in front of anyone really t up until then. And uh, I was not, my stage presence was not very good. And, and Shane stepped in with his uh, slide box guitar and, and he backed me up. 
and it, it was just like like that sort of environment that's what you need to find and, and, and hold on to that sort of people wanting to build you up and not cut you down you know, that's that's a big part of it and and in the york music scene there's a lot of that sure yeah you know, and, it's uh, a great it's a wonderfully supportive scene in a lot of people's music scenes in other towns i've been told and, and observed that it's very competitive and mm -hmm. you know that here is a whole different environment that it's it's much more cooperative and collaborative yeah. and that people really work together and and listen which well, I mean, there's a reason why I'm still here after all these years, for sure. Exactly. I mean, people, it, and, and it's not just the music. It's it's the art. It's the, you know, the poetry and stuff. It, nowadays, the, the poetry things seem to be pulling more people than the music thing. The thief he said 
your mammy said The thief he said No reason to get excited Now this is a very common issue not just for artists but for anyone out there in fact, there are statistics which say that as many as one in four or higher will experience a serious episode of mental illness, depression, profound anxiety at some point in time in their lives. If you are feeling that way now, if you just want someone to talk to, there is help out there. There are support groups, there are great care therapists, community centers, and if you are feeling these emotions or even scarier, if you are feeling suicidal, a desire to harm yourself or others, please find help. There are websites and numbers on the screen right now. If you need to speak to someone, don't be afraid to contact them. It's not weakness. It's not anything that you'll be judged for or that you deserve to be judged for. But we all deserve happiness. We deserve companionship. We deserve reinforcement and acceptance. So I urge you, please join myself, John, the rest of the staff at Culture in Maine, and don't be afraid to take your life back. You deserve it. Maybe we could find some common ground Place to touch our egos down But your olive brand stays by your side It's easier to pick your own pride Notice that when you go to your space, you have tangible objects that you create, things that people can take with them. Mm -hmm. So can you describe some of those 
to to our audience some of the things that you make yourself? Oh, I brought some. <laughs> sure. Okay, we'll um, put some pictures up. And, all right. Um, sure. Um, what they are is I'm into really I don't know things I've collected for a while are feathers, and there you need something when you're doing smudging and cleansing your energy in your house. You usually use a feather to do that. Okay. So, uh, so I make these smudge wands fans. Um, a smudge wand is usually the width of one um, turkey feather or something like that. And then I'll put like a macaw feather in there and then um, a duck feather or, you know, something else. And then wrap it up and put gemstones on it. Um, and then um, I do this all in sacred space. Uh, I create sacred space, do it in sacred space. I bless it and, and charge it with Reiki. And then I offer it, um, if someone wants to give a donation for it, you know, whatever they feel it's worth. Um, but, and then, so that's what they are. They can be custom ordered. I've had one custom ordered um, on my Facebook page. It's wrapped with purple hemp rope. Everything is pure, uh, nothing is dyed, um, except the purple hemp rope is dyed. <laughs> um, but it, it's all with good, real stuff. Um, but the feathers have uh, medicine, hold meta energetic medicine in them as well, um, according to what types of feathers they are. Now that's a whole mm. workshop in itself. Right. It's like a, I've, I know in like Native American traditions that that that's was used in the different from. feathers. That's where it comes from, right? Okay. And then of course the gemstones have the different energies and they have broken. That, that all comes together and then of course each fan or wand is, is, is unique and different. Wonderful. And I just made these little feather earrings. I thought were pretty cool. But. <laughs> I love and it. And I also make um, these kits, um, house cleansing kits. And I have like a little shell to put your white, and it has white sage in it. You put your white mm -hmm. sage. And also, also another Native American tradition that's yeah. become really popular. I noticed a lot of people are very familiar with using sage to cleanse spaces that, you know, light burning sage or using the smoke. And it's not just a, people that are followers of Native American traditions, but it's become really common now. Right, because people are learning how it does cleanse the energy and it does make you feel better. You know, you just need to experience it. Um, and then I also put a Palo Santo stick in there, Hollywood. That's what Ooh. that's called. Um, and I put a little piece of that in there with it as well because I like to burn that after burning the white sage because it brings nice, calm, um, healing, mm. uh, relaxing, good energy into the space then. So those are the things I'm making currently. And I did, I've been making my own um, incense as well, two hour burning incense sticks. Uh, I, what I <laughs> currently is using 100% lavender oil which mm. also will um, um, push away any dark energies, lavender will. Mm. And I know a lot of aromatherapy users say that lavender is very naturally soothing and cleansing and, and that it you know, can help you sleep. And you know, they use it even in hospitals. That's another one that, that even modern hospitals have started using. Right. Wow. That is so, cool. so now if people want to find you, people want to get in touch with you, either f to actually have these, these items for their own practice at home and for that positive energy, or if they want to learn more about the different tarot readings and the Reiki and the, the spiritual counseling that you do, where can they or how can they best contact or find you to do that? Well, the best place to do that um, would be to either text me 717-817-9258 or uh, email me at L-I-E-T-T-E-M-O-N-I-C-S-H-A-M-A-N at Outlook.com. <laughs> I had to Perfect. get a new one there because it's, uh, my other one's completely full and I don't know how to delete them all. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. So Liat Monique Shaman at Outlook.com. Excellent. And then you're also on Facebook I'm as well. I'm also on Facebook under Liat Monique Modern Day Shaman. And, Amazing. Um, my information is also at Hive Art Studio. Great, so website. people can, can come down to the Hive on their first Fridays and you know, or come down there when the gallery's open and, and get the information as well right, and make right, appointments. Right.
Fabulous. And I'm also having a meditation workshop the third Sunday of every month as well, starting this month. Yay! Yay! Um, one to three, same time, the third Sunday, which is next Sunday. Okay, so we have the first Sunday from one to three doing the Reiki shares, and then the third Sunday doing the meditation workshop. And it's all donation only, free parking, donation only. So if you can't afford it, you don't want to come because you can't afford it, come anyway. Still come. I'll help you out. <laughs> That's amazing. And I do help out those people who need a, an energy treatment really bad but can't pay for it. I will work with them. I'll make sure they get what they need. I'm really excited about this. I love the atmosphere. I just want to know more. I see it uh, evolving, changing, growing. Um, and I like it. It's fleeting. Once it happens, once a song comes out, once a poem comes out, it'll never come out the same. The like, culture of Maine is documenting what's going on in a way that will have that lasting staying power. It just breeds health growth. It's just, it's a necessity. It's, 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 it's a necessity, yes. I will be alone.